if you're a coach or a consultant or an online service provider, you definitely need to be doing live video. Here's what you need to know about doing live video. First, you need to know the types of live video you can do. And secondly, you need to know the basic setup that you can use. Really beginner level setup just to get you started. So when you're ready, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And let's dig into how to do live video online for your personal brand confidence, especially when you're just starting out. If you're new here, my name's Abigail. I'm over 40, I create content, and I guide other over 40 women through their digital revamps and personal reinventions, making an impact one confident personal brand at a time. Towards the end of this video, I'm gonna share an exciting new video series coming your way on this channel soon. This is part two of a two-part series, so if you want to learn what types of videos you can do for live video, make sure you go and watch part one and then come back here and let's dig into the setup and logistics of doing live videos. While this is not going to be a full-on tech tutorial, there will be some advice and some tips for the kinds of tech you can use, but mostly it's really about helping you prepare to go live. So it's all the kind of inner work and mindset work and you know organizing work that you need to think of to get you ready to go live and hit that go live button. So first, the basic tech setup that you need to consider is your lighting, your audio, and your background. So from a lighting point of view, these days, most people are familiar with ring lights and you can pick them up really cheaply online. So get yourself a good sized ring light, the bigger the better, because then it covers a broader area and is generally softer and higher quality light. And ideally, if you can get a ring light that has a dimmer switch so that you can change the brightness and also a temperature switch so that you can change how yellow it is or how white the light is. So those are the two criteria I would look out for if I were in the market for a ring light. Next one is your audio. So you need to make sure that your audio is of good quality when you go live. So that might be as simple and basic as in the space that you're going to go live, that you don't have any echoes, that there's no distracting noises, that there's you know not cars and kids and other sources of noise that happen while you're doing live. So that's your basic consideration. And if you wanna take it up a notch, then you might want to invest in a microphone like I am here. I have a Zoom microphone right here. And it doesn't need to be this fancy though. You could even just use your earphone microphone. So plug that into your laptop and then make sure that your audio from the microphone of your earphone, your headset, you could use that. So that really does take it up a notch and generally will get rid of some of that kind of echoey sound that you get if you're in a room with tiles and a lot of hard surfaces. If you are in a room with a lot of tiles and hard surfaces, it's good to lay down some towels or some carpets and some soft furnishings that can absorb the noise. That would be a basic audio setup for your going live. And then lastly is your background. So paying close attention to what is visible in the live setup when you do go live. So tidy up, make some effort to clear up your space hang a very intentional picture on the wall like I have done here. Uh, so just pay some attention to what is behind you when you do go live. So that's on a very basic level. I'm not gonna get overly technical. This is for beginners. And so those are just the three technical things you want to consider with regard to your setup for going live. The next consideration is that you wanna consider which platform you're going to go live on and if you're just starting out I would highly advise that you just choose one platform. All of the social media platforms these days video is where it's at they're all pushing video so you have a plethora of choices of where you can be doing your live videos but it's up to you again to decide which one suits you best which is the platform that you enjoy most which is the platform that you know your audience is on and which is the platform that you really want to grow on. Not necessarily all of those factors are going to meet in the middle, so there might be some guesswork and some experimentation when you first start out, but ultimately the point is to choose one and then stick to it. Consistency is king. You really do want to be consistent with it and to hone in on a single platform that that's where you do all your lives so that people begin to understand and they get used to the idea of meeting you there on that platform for those live videos. In my case I choose to use YouTube as my channel of choice even though there are other options and with regard to those other options if you are 
on all the social media platforms and I'm just going to let you know that I I'm on a social media detox so you will only ever find me being active on YouTube and sometimes on LinkedIn other than that I've pulled myself back and that's you can watch this video up here to understand why I've done that but if you're on all the social media platforms and you want to leverage going live on all of those different platforms then i highly recommend you signing up or using a platform called streamyard streamyard is a web-based tool that you can use to link various uh, different platforms various social media platforms simultaneously from youtube to linkedin to facebook um, and there are others but i haven't explored any of those so i don't know but yeah, on the free version, you can use StreamYard on one platform. Like I said, you need to start on one. So if that's where you start on the free version, great. But if you want to have multiple channels streaming your single live session, then you would need to sign up to StreamYard and connect all of those accounts and get your vid live video out onto more channels than one. If you are interested, I've put a StreamYard link down below. This is not sponsored or anything. It's just that I really like this as a platform. It's super easy. The instructions to get set up are very clear. Um, the interface, the user interface is very uh, easy to follow and engage with and you'll be up and running in no time. The next decision you need to make when it comes to doing live videos is that you need to decide on what your schedule is going to be. Like I mentioned, you need to be consistent when it comes to your live video because that's what your audience comes to expect. That's how you build their trust and that you build authority in their minds is by being consistent. So if they come to know and expect one live video a month, great stick to that one live video a month if they come to expect one live video a week then make sure that you stick to that one live video a week so i would advise when you're starting out start off slower rather than too fast because you might build momentum and then realize actually this is just too much for you to take on and then you have to change your plan and and that kind of break in normal scheduling can impact how you're being perceived. So start out as you intend to continue. You can always ramp it up in the future if you find that you really enjoy it and, then, and that you get a lot of engagement and you see all of the benefits from doing live video. You can ramp it up and start doing more, but I would suggest start out slow, find your feet, and even more reason to start out slow is that that's where you kind of are on your training wheels that's when you're figuring out the tech and you're kind of getting used to being confident and while you've got a smaller audience who's not used to seeing you on live video that's where you want to be making your mistakes you don't want to be making your mistakes necessarily when you've got a huge audience but more about making mistakes on live video in a minute and then it comes to the logistics of your live video so what are the steps you actually have to take when you have decided on a particular date that you're going to do a live session well Step number one is that you have to plug it into your own calendar. So book out the actual live session, but also book out time in your calendar for you to prepare because you don't want to be coming off of the back of a client call and then going straight into a live video session. I've done that before and it is not a good idea. You want to give yourself enough time to think about what it is that you're going to say. You want to give yourself enough time to figure out all the technology, any glitches that happen along the way in the setup. It happens and so you want to give yourself enough of a buffer to prepare for all of that. So plug the actual live session into your calendar as well as some preparation time beforehand. Assuming that you haven't made the decision to go live and then you're instantly doing it spontaneously and that you're actually doing it the right way giving yourself a few days or a few weeks to prepare for your live session you want to schedule it ahead of time. So with StreamYard, with YouTube, with LinkedIn, with Facebook you can plan it ahead of time so you can plug in and tell the platform whatever platform it is that you're using that you plan to go live at this date at this time so when you are going about creating that event on that platform you're going to need a title for your live session and you're also going to need to have a description with a promise so don't just say going live or live session You've got to explain exactly what's in it for your audience. Why would they be compelled to give up a half an hour or an hour of their time to join your live session? What's in it for them? So it's not just about you being in the spotlight and having your 15 minutes. 
or whatever it is it's not about you it's about them what do they get out of joining this live session so not only about you know whatever the content of the live session is but also are there going to be additional bonuses for those who attend live you've got to give them a reason to want to show up so while you're crafting the actual event on your platform think about your title so that it catches people's eyes and your description so that it explains what they get out of joining the live session next you're going to need a thumbnail so when you create the event on your platform for your live session the platform is going to ask you for some kind of image so you want to have a thumbnail ready whether it's a picture of you or it's graphic some kind of graphic that explains more deeply what it is that you're going to cover in the live session and what your audience is going to get out of it it's got to be eye-catching it's got to explain exactly what they can expect from joining your session and then lastly once you've created the event on your platform you have to actually then share it you have to tell people that this is coming up creating that event in that platform is not enough you have to now share it far and wide and so this is why giving yourself enough of a lead time to promote your live event and you're going to then want to share it repeatedly in that two to four week period so you can share it on your blog so create a blog post and tell people what the event is about then share it in your newsletter send it to your mailing list and tell people that you're having this event and what they're going to get out of it and then share it on your other platforms so if that is whatever social media platform you're on share it on those platforms and otherwise in your networks if you are joining a networking group or attending an event of some kind or just having a conversation with somebody in your industry then share your live event with people that you think would be interested in joining live and go so far as asking them to share it on if they know somebody who might be interested in the topic that you're talking about ask them to share your live event details with that person too so those are the factors you need to consider in the lead up and the setup of your live video and now going live on video is all about implementing and creating good habits and if you've been on a entrepreneurial journey for any length of time you know the importance of habit it's those small consistent behaviors that doesn't feel like much in the moment but it compounds over time and bringing it back to consistency as well that's how you build trust that's the fundamental element of your personal brand is building trust your audience needs to trust you your habitual consistent showing up on live video is how you're going to build trust what you'll also find when you go live on video is that you'll deepen your relationship with your audience you'll really deepen the connection that you have with them because you can have that live interaction whether they are on video with you or they're just engaging with you in the comments you're getting real-time feedback and vibes you're feeling the energy of your audience and you can kind of pick up for future videos where they need help most when they ask questions on your live videos those questions right there are titles for your future videos for your future live sessions so it really is a rich resource for you to connect with your audience for you to understand what the actual needs are and for them to feel that your relationship has gone to the next level and when you do a live session with a guest whether that guest is another expert or it's a client you're also leveraging their audience because naturally if they've had some time in the spotlight they're going to want to share the news about their upcoming interview with you and so you're going to get yourself in front of their audience that's such a powerful strategy when it comes to broadening the reach of your personal brand outside of your own network and that's going to lead directly to increased visibility and increased confidence towards the end of this video i share with you the underrated superpower that you have for doing live video with confidence which brings me to the new video series that i'm going to be starting right here on this channel i've decided in line with this video that i'm going to start doing abigail k live starting in a few weeks i'm going to be going live here on youtube where i share some educational useful tangible and practical information for you to use in your personal brand so if you're looking 
to increase your visibility or your authenticity in your personal brand then you're going to want to subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when I schedule those live sessions. I'm also going to be bringing in guests to interview to help over 40 women entrepreneurs with their personal brand, their confidence, their business. These sessions are going to give you actionable training, advice and insights to help you build your personal brand confidence. So if you want to either join the Abigail K live training sessions with me, check out abigailk.com forward slash live for the upcoming date. Or if you'd like to be a guest on my live interview sessions, then check out the link in my description and apply now. After watching this video, are you more excited about the prospect of doing live video? And if you started doing live videos consistently from tomorrow, what would your business look like three months from now? I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments down below. And if this video helped you today, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please share this video with at least one person. That helps get this information and inspiration out to more over 40 women so that they can go on and impact the world. Until next time, bye. You could also do a live video. So if you recognize the value of going live on video, but you're still dubious about it, then check out. So if you, babe.